Fed's fight against inflation is already being felt is the housing market. The rate on this 30-year mortgage surging to just under 6.3% yesterday, as we reported right here on the exchange. Look at these moves since January. As a result, we've seen new home sales falling 17% in April to the slowest pace since the start of the pandemic. Pending home sales, a broader gauge of future sales hitting a two-year low. Today, sentiment for home builders also falling for the sixth straight month to its lowest level in two years. As for the builder stocks, KB Home, DR Horton, Meritage, Lennar, they're all down more than 40% from their highs under pressure as well today. For more, I'm joined now by Lawrence Yoon. He's National Association of Realtors Chief Economist. And Kenneth Leon is CFRA's direct, Director of Research, and he downgraded the housing stocks, uh, or builder stocks, I should say, just today. Welcome to both of you. And Lawrence, I'll start with you. Surprising to see a little bit of a rebound in mortgage applications last week. Um, what can you tell us about the state of the market? Uh, well, uh, you know, the housing market is very sensitive to interest rate changes. So more than 300 basis point increase in mortgage rate from December of last year will certainly uh, harm housing market. The sales will come down. Pending contracts have been uh, trending downwards. Prices are still uh, elevated uh, because one of the support for home prices is rents, and the rents are rising very strongly. Yeah, the rents are rising. So when, yesterday when I tweeted the mortgage rate, you know, people are shocked to, to, to even be aware that it's gone up to 6.3%. I don't think they've quite caught up with the velocity in these moves. And what other choices do they have? So is this going to require people to stay involved with the housing market, even if it hurts? Uh, you know, first, uh, the consumers need to run the numbers to the mortgage calculator. What may have been, say, $2,000 per month in mortgage payment for the same house, the number could be $2,900 today. So one has to run the numbers to see how the financial, uh, whether a person is reaching the limit or not. And naturally, uh, with higher uh, monthly payment, that means some people are simply priced out. So they have to renew their leases. What we are hearing in the marketplace is multiple offers for rents. So if uh, some property is listed for rent, five people show up and they're scrambling to get that property. So interesting dynamics. Wow. So now the bidding wars are for rented homes uh, or rents in general. So we saw yesterday news from both Redfin and Compass mortgage brokers that they're laying off around 10 percent of their workforce. Redfin said they think that we could see a sales slowdown that lasts years, not months. I think the crucial question is whether that means prices are going to fall or not. What's your gut telling you? Uh, so first part is that inflation is terrible, but inflation does provide a hedge for real estate. So we saw that in the 1970s, early 1980s, when inflation was high. And even when Paul Volcker raised the mortgage rate up to 18 percent, that home prices did not decline on a nationwide basis. So high rents, high inflation does provide support, but that's not a good news because we want to have a better affordability with lower interest rate. So anything to bring down the consumer price inflation, whether drilling more oil, because oil price dynamic currently is driving up inflation. So we have to consider all the supply, uh, you know, even on the macroeconomic basis, so that the inflation pressure lessen and thereby mortgage rates can begin to stabilize. Right, because in other words, mortgage rates going lower, the only way you think housing might get more affordable at this rate. That's really interesting. Uh, Lawrence, thanks for your time today. We'll check back in soon. Thank you. Lawrence Yun. Let's turn now to...